You're at that one weird friend's house watching the final season of Stranger Things. You look in disgust at how he dunks his Cheetos in his milk. Why do you even hang out with him? All right, you're too poor to afford Netflix. Hey Kyle, you need some new friends. And a job. And a haircut. Anyway, I see you like watching Stranger Things. Me too. But what about the strangest things in the universe? That's right. Look at these examples I put on a website created by today's sponsor Squarespace and their all-in-one web platform. More on that later though, because there's stuff out there in the universe like green unknown ghost clouds, a see-through galaxy, and way stranger things that literally shouldn't even exist, like CK Volpecule. This object was actually observed by some monks back in 1670 as a new star. But it brightened, faded, came back again, and then vanished. For centuries, these monks and then astronomers filed it under what's called a nova, which is a sudden brightness caused by a white dwarf eating another star. And then they moved on. But modern telescopes have shown us how much stranger it actually is. What we see today isn't a new star, and it's not a nova either. In fact, CK Volpecule is the wreckage of a stellar merger, where two stars become one. So, how did it happen? Well, a red giant star absolutely smashed, kind of, into a white dwarf. And this interaction was brighter than 10 million suns. But that's not the strange part at all. It's this. The two stars then collapsed into a faint, dusty nebula shaped like an hourglass, with gas blasting outward at up to 1700 kilometers per second. And even the chemistry is bizarre. Yes, even more than that time I cosplayed as Barney the Dinosaur. Not only did it completely break what we thought should happen, but it also created a radioactive molecule in space, aluminum-26, the first time such a thing was ever seen here. That same isotope is the one we found locked into ancient meteorites and on Earth. That means the explosion created a huge amount of nuclear dust in a way we could never expect, which means we don't know exactly what hides behind the dust. But astronomers, and I guess modern monks such as myself, think it's on its way to becoming one of the rarest star species in the galaxy, an early carbon star. These are stars that form a carbon-rich atmosphere, giving them a deep red color. Basically, a dead star merges with another dying star, mixes all their insides up together, and brings carbon from the cores to the surface. They're rare and exotic, and this creates massive amounts of gas around it so they literally choke on their own carbon. And CK Volcopuli isn't just a dead star. It's not even two dead stars. It's a dead star and a dying star that have merged, died, and basically come alive again. It's some kind of Frankenstein zombie object in space. So, what do you think, Kyle? Pretty strange, eh? Don't worry, that's just the literal tip of the strangenessness I have planned for you. And we have to be quick since your weird friend might wake up in a few minutes. Let's look at something called fast radio bursts. Because, hear me out, in 2007, astronomers and myself were scanning old data and found a one-off radio pulse that lasted just 5 milliseconds. One that was brighter than entire galaxies. This was the first ever fast radio burst, or FRB. Since then, we found hundreds, Kyle, hundreds, and they all have the same story. A signal that comes out of nowhere, dumps insane amounts of energy, and then disappears. How insane is that energy, you ask? Well, a single FRB releases in a blink what our sun produces in days to weeks. Some repeat, most don't. Some come from distant galaxies billions of light years away, others come from closer. Every one of them is brighter and shorter than physics says should even be possible. What the f Exactly. Who or what is causing this? Well, the best suspects, magnetars. Young neutron stars with magnetic fields so powerful, they can twist space-time around them. When they crack or flare, they might blast out FRBs. In fact, in 2020, we caught a magnetar in our own galaxy doing exactly that, but even that doesn't explain everything, such as the repeating bursts with strange patterns, the disappearing ones, or those so energetic they literally break our understanding of physics. Ultimately, we literally have no idea what's causing most of these FRBs in the universe. What are they, Kyle? What are they? I must know. <sighs> Sorry, I lost my composure. It's just so weird and annoying not knowing, right? Like, is my wife cheating again? Why does she smell like fresh croissant when my best friend is a baker? No one knows. 
or why when you come home from work you hear, oh my god, from the bedroom. It's the same mystery to me as those FRBs. But that aside and completely unrelated, Kyle, have you heard of the oh my god particle? Yes, that is the official name. Because on the night of October 15th, 1991, a detector in Utah, of all freaking places, caught a single cosmic ray. Yes, literally one proton. So powerful the only thing scientists could say was oh my god. Why? Because that one proton carried about 50 joules of energy. Doesn't sound like much, until you realize that's the same energy as a fastball in baseball, crammed into something smaller than an atom. Or if that's not enough for you, about 40 million times more energetic than the highest gamma ray photons, the stuff that makes the Hulk possible, from quasars like Ton 618. This proton was moving at approximately 99.9999999999999999951% the speed of light. You're saying bolt-on, am I right? Huh? No? No? Okay. Anyway, so why was this simple proton considered so odd? Well, at those energies, physics says cosmic rays should interact with the cosmic microwave background and lose energy. This one proton shouldn't have reached us at all, yet it did. We've since detected other ultra-high energy cosmic rays, but the oh my god particle still stands as a middle finger from the universe to our theories. It was 40,000 times more energetic than anything humans can make at the Large Hadron Collider, the biggest particle accelerator in the world. You know, this makes me realize something. I've seen a lot of cosmic horrors. You know what I should do? Build a full Strangest Object website, and for that I'm going to use Squarespace. Because if you're going to share something this cursed with the universe, you need to make it look incredible. And Squarespace gives you cutting-edge design tools that make even five-dimensional beings who've never built a website before able to do so. Every layout, every animation, it just works. You could make one as well, Kyle, about your diaries of the journeys we go on. And if you want it to be discovered by the internet, Squarespace automatically handles all the discovery tools, meta descriptions, SEO, optimization, it's all built in, so your website has its own gravitational pull. Come to think of it, there's also a built-in donation tool so we can fundraise for our own particle accelerator. So when you're ready to start, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gravipool to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Where were we? All right, that cosmic ray. Not to mention, we don't even have a full understanding of where all these cosmic rays come from. I would make a joke here about not knowing where my divorce suddenly came from, similar to that particle, but we all know why it happened. I told you about a minute ago. What I didn't tell you was that our marriage really fell apart way before that incident. Something that could also happen to our next strange thing. NGC 1052 DF2. The galaxy without dark matter. Maybe. See, galaxies aren't supposed to work without dark matter. It's the invisible glue holding them together. Without it, the whole galaxy should just fly apart like that time my brother destroyed my Lego Death Star and I cried about it for three months. But this is why when astronomers measured the motions of the stars inside this galaxy, they were shocked, I tell you. Shocked. The stars weren't moving fast enough. How strange, they said. And there was no sign of the massive dark halo that every galaxy is supposed to have. How strange here. By every model, this galaxy should not exist. At first, people thought it had to be a mistake. Maybe the distance was wrong. Maybe they calculated some stars wrong. But further measurements don't really provide more answers. NGC DF2 is really missing most, if not all, of its dark matter as in it might only have one four hundredths of the amount it should. You can literally see through it and all the galaxies behind it. Either some unknown process stripped the dark matter away, or these galaxies formed differently than anything we thought possible. In a universe where dark matter is everywhere, NGC 1052 DF2 is weirder than your unconscious friend Kyle. I'll give you that. No. Oh. And he's persistent too. We're not done yet, because what about Henny's four-wear pia? In 2007, the year of Halo 3, COD 4, Bioshock, and the last time we were happy, a Dutch school teacher scrolling through Galaxy Zoo spotted something that made astronomers weep. Well, I for sure wept. A glowing green blob floating next to Galaxy IC2497. Nobody had a clue what it was. So it got the most Dutch name possible. Honey's Forewear. Literally, Honey's Object. But what makes it giga strange is that it's not a galaxy, not a star, and not a nebula in the usual sense. Yes, it's a massive cloud of gas about 300 light years across, energized so strongly it glows in bright green light. The problem? 
The only thing powerful enough to light it up should be the supermassive black hole in IC2497. But that black hole is chilling, literally doing nothing. No quasar, no jets, no eating. Suspicious, right? The best explanation we have is that the foreweb is a light echo. Tens of thousands of years ago, this galaxy's black hole was a raging quasar due to an almost collision with another galaxy, flooding the space with radiation. But then, it shut down once there was no more new star material to munch on. However, its light is still racing through the gas, keeping it lit like a cosmic neon sign you'd see in a 1980s disco ray. Boy, those were fun. I miss my platforms and tight spandex pants. This object could literally be the ghost of a quasar, and it's still haunting the void around it. You can see from this very image simulation what scientists think actually happened. But what could possibly be even stranger than that? Well, nothing! Literally, like a void, similar to my soul. Oh, and the Bootes void is also one such thing. See, most of the universe looks like a cosmic web or mom's spaghetti. Galaxies strung along filaments with big empty pockets of space in between. But the Bootes void isn't just empty, it's too empty. This region spans 330 million light years and inside, only about 60 galaxies. There are meant to be thousands, more than thousands. But it's like someone carved a hole out of the universe. Why is this void so empty? There is no final answer yet. But one theory is that it was a void created in the early universe before there were stars and galaxies and stuff to fill it. We are actively trying to figure this out. Much like we are with the Great Attractor. Because in places where galaxies actually exist as they're supposed to, they're moving with purpose. And ours, along with a hundred thousand others, are being pulled towards something hidden behind the Milky Way's dust. And we call this the Great Attractor. It's a massive gravitational anomaly, centered 150 to 250 million light years away, and it's dragging the local group of galaxies, our group, at 600 kilometers per second. It's literally impossible to see it directly, but surveys suggest it's part of an enormous supercluster complex. The creepy part is that we just literally can't see it and we're all still being pulled in regardless. And that reminds me of the time I almost drowned in one of those pitch black water slides. It felt like I was being waterboarded. <laughs> yeah, good times. Perhaps that's what caused my unusual fascination with it. But you know what's darker than my fantasies, Kyle? Dark flow! But this is not for secret dungeons, and instead it's for galaxies far beyond the Great Attractor. These ones all seem to be drifting in the same direction, like there's something even bigger tugging on them than the Big Attractor. Much bigger. Astronomers call it Dark Flow. This theory suggests it's as if a structure beyond the edge of the observable universe is reeling galaxies in. Yes, from outside the universe, Kyle! Something we can't see, can't touch, maybe can't even measure. The effect might be real, or it might be an illusion in our data. But if it is real, it's a hint of the physics far beyond what we know. Scientists are actively debating what this data means, and you know what? Well, it's not really likely to be something outside of our universe, but the numbers, Kyle, the numbers! If something were to be pulling these galaxies from outside our universe, it would be these same numbers. Well, that's the weirdest to think of, and yet there is even more theoretical strangeness. I'll have to explain these things to you quickly because if I knock out your friend one more time, I might be in trouble. And I'm already on probation from when I sped through that residential area in our What If The Largest Objects In The Universe Collided video. First up, vacuum energy. You'd think empty space means nothing. You know, like in the Butas void. But the vacuum of the universe isn't empty. It copes and seethes with energy. Quantum physics suggests particles pop in and out of existence constantly, even in a vacuum. And this vacuum energy adds up. It could be driving the expansion of the universe itself. Now, dark energy, the mysterious force accelerating the expansion of the universe, may be vacuum energy. The problem is that the predicted vacuum energy from the theory we have is 120 orders of magnitude higher than what we have actually measured in space. So we're very wrong. And that's not just a rounding error. We were that wrong. Physicists and myself are kind of embarrassed about it. But even that isn't as strange as dark stars. These could have been the very first stars in the universe with about up to a million solar masses. Yes, one million. And they weren't like the ones we see today. We think they might have been powered not by nuclear fusion, but by dark matter. As dark matter particles collided with each other and annihilated, they would release energy, 
Creating massive dark stars hundreds or thousands of times larger than our sun. They wouldn't shine like normal stars, but instead may be a billion times more powerfully. If they existed, they could have been the seeds for the first galaxies and black holes. We've never seen one, but I'd bet your favorite nightlight that we're on the hunt and we will find out what happened. Your friend is waking up. Uh, it's time for me to go. If he wakes up, he'll probably think that he slipped on a puddle of milk and Cheetos. Wait, what? Where am I going? Well, into deep space, of course. And you're coming with me as always.